see that too often, coyote just hanging out on the railroad tracks, feasting away, doesn't even care about us. It's so funny, dude, these bucks will just like, do the funniest posturing. They're always like right off on the outskirts of all the does, just watching them start like raking some sagebrush. Or see another buck coming in, then we'll run it off. So we've only made it about five minutes down the road. I think we've already seen 35 pronghorn. Probably gonna be a lot of that today. Just trying to find one, I don't know. The pronghorn are hard to score. If you've never hunted pronghorn, they are a challenge to score. If you're into the score game, pronghorn with a lot of mass around their like bases, big cutters. I just want to find like a cool one that maybe is unique characteristically. A lot of times you can find some freaky weird ones or it's just very, very symmetrical, like super pretty. Those are kind of the two criteria. Judging by the first five miles, it may take a little bit to kind of work through some of those. This is a special area of Wyoming. It is considered the red desert area. It holds a lot of pronghorn, but it's also one of the largest migration corridors in the entire United States. The Wyoming Migration Initiative is a group out of Laramie, I believe. They've done a ton of research, but a lot of mule deer, for example, winter down in the Red Desert, and they actually live upwards of Jackson Hole area. Doe, I believe it's number 255, I'll double check this, is the single uh, longest recorded mule deer to migrate in the United States. This doe, she went all the way to Island Park Idaho. They've done a lot of awesome research using game cameras, using GPS collars to track the progress of these animals. Just a little quick tidbit about where we're at, but we're going to be driving around looking for pronghorn and uh, come along and join us. Should be a fun hunt. That's all I have for now. So tough with the heat waves to really make them out at any kind of distance. Looks like a decent buck, but it's so hard to tell. Three hundred and twenty-five yards. This antelope are not real spooky. been here for like an hour and a half. It seems like premature to even think about shooting something so soon. He's pretty tall. He's got decent mass. Like he's he's close to what we're looking for I'd say. I apologize if it's a little windy um, but I'm telling you for any of you that want to come west and do your very first hunt out here pronghorn is such a great option. Particularly in Wyoming you do have to apply but you can draw legitimately a tag every year. If you want to ex experiment with a western hunt, you should come and do pronghorn. It's physically not demanding. You're going to see a lot of animals. You will get to kind of experience a little taste of the west and uh, really just a great kind of starter hunt. But I think we need to keep looking. It's just too dang early to pull the trigger. Got to at least camp one night. Welcome to uh, Antelope Camp. We are pulled off on the side of a road. Looks pretty barren, but it's gonna work for tonight. We're just gonna throw out the canvas cutters. 
and just go very minimalistic. I would say that would be qualified as a very good first day in the antelope woods. Not really the woods, but the desert. I would say over 50 bucks. The two towards the end of the night, definitely like the most interesting to us, but man, we gotta keep looking. We're gonna just keep on grinding away. It's an easy tag to get. There's a lot of antelope all over the state. If you need a resource to learn more about it, you should definitely check out Go Hunt. All you have to do is enter in Hush when you sign up for a membership to their insider platform. That's what's gonna tell you like unit by unit, specific information, state information. It's gonna give you the tools you would need to like figure out, okay, based on where I live or I want, where I wanna visit in Wyoming, what antelope units are available for zero points if, if you have nothing to maybe you have a couple points, but you wanna to try to figure out what tags you can draw. The other huge tool that we use is Onyx. So kind of a blend of Go Hunt and Onyx Maps are the two main things we use to figure out where we're gonna go hunting. <laughs> what do you have to say get, for yourself? Well, I guess uh, I thought the canvas cutters come with a sleeping bag, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess they don't. So what are we working with here? We're working with about every layer of clothing that first light makes so you got your puffy pants puffy on puffy pants puffy jacket three of the merinos <laughs> and then my soft shell we got another puffy down here for my feet moving blanket so hopefully we stay warm tonight fyi if anybody's looking to buy a canvas cutter they don't come with a sleeping bag right martin right i uh, appreciate everybody following along we'll see you guys bright and early hopefully martin doesn't have frostbite signing off from Antelope Camp, night number one. I'm alive. It was cold, but I stayed pretty warm upper body. My toes got froze though. I had two pairs of socks on. Decided to get the little buddy heater and try to thaw them out at around 5.30 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have sunlight for 12 hours, so we're good for now. We've only made it about, I don't know, a quarter mile from camp and we've already seen like seven or eight bucks. So I'd say the morning is off to a great start. We're gonna do a lot of driving, lots of looking around and hopefully find, find the one today, the one that's just like stands out above the rest. I just can't get over how many antelope there are out here and how many bucks we're seeing. We're trying to move to a different spot, but every like couple hundred yards, we see another group and then we have to stop, and look at them. It's pretty fun, not gonna lie to you. It's pretty dang fun. Uh, we went without any wind in Wyoming from sundown last night until approximately 9.40 a.m. this morning. The wind is picking up. I suspect it'll get stronger as the day goes on. So we kind of know our parameters of no wind. It'd be nice to shoot one when it's not windy, but I mean, I don't know how realistic that's gonna be. So we're gonna move to a different area, uh, go a little further south, check out some new country down there. A lot of this stuff up here is heavy oil, gas, checkerboard type country. And um, we made a phone call, got some permission to hunt some of the stuff that is. So that's the plan right now.
we've been seeing a lot of well a lot of people are considering wild horses some people consider them feral horses um, they are pretty prevalent though out here in the west parts of Oregon Nevada has a big problem Utah Wyoming these horses are out here in uh, big numbers we saw earlier today gosh a group of probably like 35 there's a group of five or six another group of like five or six so lots and lots of horses out here and the big issue is they're just they're federally protected so they're not managed in any way like other wild game species are like your pronghorn or your mule deer or your elk and so their numbers have really grown over the years they're excellent foragers so they have a tendency to out forage and eat wild animals and uh, it's it's a very sensitive topic similar to the wolf discussion or grizzly bear discussion there's a lot of varying opinions certainly can't deny the beauty of them they're incredible animals i just i wish we had a better system in place you find them in a lot of places that you find pronghorn but i'd be curious if you guys have any of your own opinions or takes on the situation and or solutions i mean that's the key is really trying to come up with a solution We've got, uh, got some beer brats boiling currently, not too far from being done. Martin has uh, put a lift kit on the canvas cutter tonight. Let me walk you through what he did real quick. We're hoping for a better night's sleep. So I gave him my blow up sleeping pad and he's got the foam that comes with the canvas cutter. We've got a blanket stashed underneath here already. Another blanket on top. He's uh, in my puffy jacket. He's in my best puffy pants. I think he's got three pairs of socks on, sweatpants. He has his buddy heater all ready to go in the event that he has to wake up in the middle of the night. The learning lesson here is canvas cutters don't come with an actual sleeping bag. You gotta bring them. And if you don't, when it gets to be like 17, 18, 19 degrees, you get cold in the morning and you wake up borderline frostbite on your toes. A little pro tip, everybody. So, we have a Mountain Ops Nalgene bottle, but before he goes to bed, it will be filled with boiling hot water. He doesn't have a sleeping bag, so he's gonna take it in his sleeping canvas cutter, and he's gonna use it as like a hot rock, a hot bottle of water, and that is gonna conduct heat, particularly down to his feet. His feet were the issue last night. So whether you're backpack hunting, or you're just truck camping and you didn't bring anything, uh, this is a great trick. We'll have the final results in the morning. It's been a rad day. Uh, we have seen, gosh, I can't even tell you how many antelope. The numbers are incredible. We just haven't found the one. And after talking to Mark, the biologist, he really reiterated the fact that you should be patient. You got to look over a lot of them. But there's some dandies down in this red desert district. This is a premium tag that took a long time to draw once again. It's just a cool type of terrain so uh we're taking it all in lots of time behind the old vortex we will uh we'll see you guys in the morning hopefully with some pronghorn running around right here or like they were this morning just right here